Hey guys, happy December. Welcome to another presidential smackdown as we have the saxophone artist Bill Clinton taking on the actor Ronald Reagan. I hope everyone is having a great December. I'm Ashton. This is Andy. Andy. Yeah, Andy, um, we are in week eight, guys. Exciting things. The playoff picture is starting, starting to shape out. As you guys know, we go to 10 weeks. So a few players still, or a few presidents still have buys. But for the most part, most presidents have a straight shot. Um, Andy, let's get into your f- first few Republican games. All right, first game up on my docket today, up on your screen now, and that is the away a Democratic candidate of Big Boy Taft, the first president to be officially eliminating, fighting for his right to get a single win in this series against a solid foe in Teddy Roosevelt. Obviously, Teddy starts off better in New York City being from there. Taft always starts off with Ohio, but usually never ends up with Ohio. Taft does take an early lead in this matchup, as you see. But Teddy, at about week six, week seven, takes back the lead. Kind of goes from there. Florida, Ohio is back and forth. You have Georgia and NC go solid red for Teddy early on. It's basically tied up until the midway point. But after that, Teddy just kind of takes a hold of Florida and doesn't look back and just gets the W. Takes states like North Carolina, Florida, Ohio away from Taft. Wisconsin, Minnesota, even Oregon and Washington, the clean sweep of the two northwestern states that's easily flipped for Republicans up there. Taft only ends up with Pennsylvania and Michigan. Teddy wins a nice victory, 320-218, continues his fight to try to win that RNC North division. Uh, Andy, I'm a little shocked Taft actually gave up a fight somewhat, but you know he did what he typically does and rolls over. For the competition. Big Boy Taft is not a good candidate. We have seen that many weeks <laughs> after. He's officially, officially double eliminated now after still not winning a single game so far through eight weeks of competition. Moving on to the next matchup. Democrat away candidate. An interesting candidate fighting for his survival to the playoffs. George W. Bush at Abe Lincoln. A tough, tough divisional round there in that RNC so, <laughs> I got to restart. I, I knew it was a sound of being stupid. But next up, Ashton, we have an interesting battle against a candidate, the Democratic candidate, the away candidate, trying to fight for his right to be in the playoffs, George W. Bush, against the divisional leader in the DNC South, Abraham Lincoln. It's a, R, it's a DNC, RNC South divisional matchup here for supremacy. It was really good. W. Bush gets the early advantage in Texas being from that state. Abe gets a lot of the states early on, as we see in this matchup. But W. Bush comes back, kind of makes this tide, and gets a small lead into Week 7. It's a close matchup, really, throughout this this competition up until later. And just like the matchup beforehand, Florida is key. Really, Florida is kind of the deciding state, at least what it seems to look like at the map as we get through here. Abe regains the lead back in Week 15 kind of just takes a small lead throughout and it gets down to the last week and we're down to one percent separating these two in the percentage popular vote you're going to see on top of your screen but it actually ends up not being as close as it would seem as Abe wins a 319 to 219 victory so basically the same electoral count as the last matchup just a little bit closer Abe gets states like Arizona Washington Nevada Colorado to flip Virginia to flip and Bush gets Iowa and Minnesota to flip to his, well, Iowa mostly to flip to his side, gets the loss. That's going to hurt his chances to become any kind of leader. And hopefully, if things go his way, he can get a wild card, but it's not looking great for W. Bush. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Andy, um, it'll be interesting. I was hoping to see kind of father versus son in the playoffs, but it looks like RNC may not have that happen. And finally, my last matchup is not as interesting as the other two, and that is both some 
average at best candidates, LBJ on the road against Ford, Democrat, Republican matchup. And it's really just Ford throughout this match. LBJ does get help a little bit in Texas, but we know how hard it is for a Democrat to win in Texas. It rarely happens. LBJ does get an early lead, but Ford cuts it down in week nine. You see Pennsylvania being solid blue. It's a tight race as we get closer. Tied week 18. You see tons of purple throughout the map, but Ford takes a lead late, kind of rides that, gets the biggest electoral vote difference of my three matches at 322 to 216. So both, all three of my matchups hovering around that 320 to 2, really 18 range there. Ford wins some interesting states with Maine, Oregon, Washington in there. LBJ wins Virginia. No shock there. Pennsylvania, no, some in the bottom, really no shockers. Too, too shocking there. LBJ pretty much now was eliminated from competition, Ashton, and Ford is a long shot candidate. We'll see more of why when we get to the current standings after you go through your games, but it seems like for now LBJ is out and Ford has a small percent chance of making it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has an outside chance. So let me get into my first match, home candidate Jimmy Carter taking on uh, what is the seventh seed and Andrew Jackson at his one and four. Um, really, to start, Andy, I thought Jimmy Carter was heavily favored. I thought he was going to walk away with this, but things just got worse and worse as people can look on the screen. Um, at the end, uh, really, the Southeast wasn't competitive much. For Jimmy Carter, Jackson fought his way and really, really kind of dealt a uh, a very devastating loss to Carter. He, I I really think Carter was trying to make that playoff push, and he couldn't get it done in conference, dropping a conference game to Jackson. Now Jackson has an outside chance. Um, at two and four, if things everything goes his way, the DNC is a lot less competitive. As you can see, a Carter who was the number one seed got knocked off by uh, <clears throat> knocked off by the seventh seed. So that's <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> uh, bad for Carter. So let's go on to our next matchup, Andy, and that is Obama against Woodrow Wilson, another top seed facing against a uh, middle tier candidate at the sixth seed. Uh, Wilson being at two and two, so he's at 500 trying to fight to be above uh, 500. And starting now, um, I typically Obama always doesn't struggle with the popular vote, but he can sometimes struggle with the electoral college. And I saw a lot of signs in this game that he was struggling. Early on, it looked like it might start becoming one-sided in face of Obama. But, you know, credit Andy, the Woodrow Wilson, for not giving up because he had a strong, strong third quarter, fourth quarter comeback. As you can see, making a lot of states purple, um, including Florida and Arizona. So he he came back hard. Um, this ended up being a relatively close game, uh, with the difference being only a few, only a few electoral votes. With Obama winning by two seventy four. So I think it's one of Obama's closer wins, but in the SmackDown, those close wins matter a lot, especially when it comes to seeding. Um, <clears throat> so, Andy, let's go to my last match, which was FDR, your favorite president, against George H.W. Bush. I think it's fair to say FDR has had a struggle winning in the SmackDown and it kind of continued. George H. looked like he had a solid lead. There was at one point, maybe in the third quarter of the game, I thought possibly FDR could have a chance. But he didn't hold on to that hope much. 
or by much, and it ended up being a decently sized victory by around 336 to Roosevelt's 202. <clears throat> uh, it ended up becoming a 337 victory to 201. George H.W. Bush getting the job done against a lesser ranked opponent on the DNC side, pushing them up to 6 and 1. A very impressive win by George H.W. Bush. All right, Ashton, before we move on to our main matchup, Reagan versus Clinton, a big time matchup, not only for standings, but just for interest stake, because both huge presidents in recent memory. Let's go ahead and throw up those current standings. All right, guys, as you can see, these are your current standings before the matchup tonight and after week's eight action that we just went through. I think the biggest implication you saw was that Carter and Jackson matchup. Jackson, when he beat Carter, survived, has a chance now to make the playoff. It's slim. Two and four does not look great. And Carter opened the door to people like even Clinton, some getting in over him. Mm -hmm. I really don't see Carter losing. Uh, getting out of that spot, but he opened the door for other candidates to slip in that DNC. And the Republican side, you just see some interesting matchups. You look at the RNC North, it's it's HW and Teddy. Taft's completely just gone in that division. And you see the RNC West as, base, as Nixon is basically out. Yeah, Andy, I think this makes our uh, Clinton versus Reagan match even more important, if Clinton wants to basically make it where Jackson has no chance of taking his spot, he has to win this match. And for Reagan, Reagan is in competition with George H.W. for that number one seed. Because after that win by George H.W., he takes the number one seed away from Reagan. And Reagan, if he wins, will take back that number one seed. So th this matchup, this primetime matchup, Andy, has a lot of implications. Yeah, Ashton, it's a very important matchup tonight. We know Reagan wants that number one seed, as anybody would. And Clinton is fighting to stay alive. He should make it even with a loss, but... A win there really just solidifies his chances of being 100% of making the playoffs. So it's an important matchup, to say the least, an interesting one, to say the least. And Ashton, who are you predicting to win between Clinton and Reagan? I don't know, Andy. Um, I know Clinton has had um, some struggles with Republicans. He's done, he's done all right against Republican challengers, I think, two his two losses are two republicans so he doesn't have a history of beating them but i i honestly think bill clinton is gonna get the upset he's gonna beat reagan i gotta go against the grain with you ashton i gotta go with reagan he has been known to be dominant in this series and on top of that we have seen countless weeks the republicans just be able to win more than the Democrats, especially in the in the main matchups and just overall. So it seemed like a Republican's going to win here, and i got to go with Reagan. But, guys, let's go ahead and kick this match off. All right, guys, as this matchup gets off, you see Clinton obviously has Arkansas already to the lead, him being from Arkansas. No shocker there. California is a little bit less blue with Reagan, but I still suggest California or expect California to go to Clinton anyways. Florida gets an early lead for Reagan and Ohio, Pennsylvania to Clinton. Any other thing kind of stands out for you, Ashton, as we're kicking it off with Reagan looking like he is getting a huge lead right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that early number, especially in popular vote, is a problem for Clinton. He needs to kind of juice up that popular vote if he wants to have a chance of winning. Um, critical states for Clinton, really that Midwest is very important for Clinton. He needs to try to win all three. Because I have a feeling I have a feeling Reagan's going to pick off some New England states, Andy. Yeah, Reagan's, we've known just in real life, very charismatic, very easily. He won, you know, 48 states, so you, he, he wins a lot of states. I can see him picking off, you know, New Hampshire. It's maybe even Maine, some of those either, easier states to pick off. And also the Northwest is also Washington, Oregon, are states we know are easy to flip if it's a good Republican candidate. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Arkansas can help if Bill Clinton plays that um, decently. That can offset offset losing a Connecticut, possibly, or New Hampshire. But really, it's important for Bill Clinton to get that Arkansas, to get that um, New Mexico, and pick off a Florida, maybe, or Ohio, in case if he loses Michigan or Wisconsin. Clint also has to keep, if he wants a really a chance, either Nevada and Arizona, hopefully both of them. But Arizona is very easy going towards the Republicans. And also Florida is huge for either candidate and Pennsylvania. What, if you get either one or especially if you get both, it makes the, the chances for your their opponent winning very slim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think what we see here early on is Reagan having a convincing lead. Um Ooh. Um, Clinton has sewed up New York and California, but that's Andy. It's it's not looking good. And oh well, Pennsylvania flipped. That's a big I will one. Say, I will say this, Ashton. We've seen many times where it looks like a candidate is just dominating halfway through for only the, his opponent to be coming back and making it close. So I expect that to happen here. Hmm. Yeah, um, he needs to sew up Illinois. He can't afford to lose Illinois. Um, I would possibly, if I was Clinton, I would look at, like, North Carolina, Virginia, Illinois. Like, Virginia, he's not even fighting for, and that, that's a more friendly state to Democrats. So, a little confused why Clinton doesn't go for a state like Virginia. I think um, what we're seeing is, is Clinton being very defensive, and that's just not going to work with a candidate like Reagan, who is very, very skilled at almost every position. So if you're trying to play defense in a state that should already be yours, like Illinois, like Virginia even, it's going to be tough to win because you have no attacking phases. Well, I I, I realize that um, Reagan is getting a ton of ideological points. Like, he is constantly spending those, Andy, and it looks like it's burying almost – um clinton like clinton can't keep up with it we have seen though ashton that sometimes those points can go against you if you use the wrong tactics the further you go in those trees the more negative effects you get on some of those non-republican or non-democratic states depending on who you are but a five percent lead he can be very risky especially with only about a week or two left Ooh. Ooh, I, I just don't see enough mark. competitive it's states. Huge. You see a lot of dark red. Arizona's dark red. That Colorado is dark red. And that's just, you don't see that for Ooh, a Democrat. That social justice might have helped out a little bit, Andy. So we're going to. Is it enough, though? That's the question. And I don't think it is. Yeah, that social justice knocked off Wisconsin from being slight red. Andy, this looks very bad for Clinton. Um, let, let's Clinton go ahead and check the leads. Rhode Island. Unless Clinton somehow wins all of those purple-pink states and steals one somehow, I just don't see him winning. Yeah, um, you have Iowa at a dead tie. He's slightly leading in Ar- Arkansas, New Mexico, slightly leading in Oregon, Washington. There's a path. Andy, there is a path, but it's literally winning every single state that isn't dark red. Even then, I think he might still lose by a narrow margin. Well, we'll see as we, we're going to start getting into the results. If Maine goes red first, I think it's going to already be over. Yeah, Andy, it looks like your pick, Reagan, he's going to knock off Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton really, really needed this one. Um, we'll see. Ooh. Yep. That main is just huge to me. I think a lot of times when I've looked at Republicans that have won, it's they win Maine. And that's a good like telling Ooh. state. Pennsylvania is a big loss for him too. That yeah. Ooh. He had to win Pennsylvania. Yeah, he picks off Arkansas, but 
that's not going to be enough, Andy. He's going to get it with Texas. And now he's just adding more insult to injury with these states. I mean, it's looking oh. like it's going to be high 300s for Reagan here. Yeah. Uh, not as competitive as I thought it was going to be, Andy. Clinton just really didn't show up tonight. He maybe just got scared from his primetime matchup, but that's going to hurt him in his chances. You know, he's make just like what Carter did earlier. He's opening the door. Yes, Andy, it is pretty shocking to me how both the Democrats in their RNC versus DNC matchups just they they didn't show up. They're not being competitive, Andy, and it is it's hurting them. It's hurting them a lot in their standings. Um, Bill Clinton now is opening a door for him sliding into a wild card spot, possibly. Um, what's your reactions initially? I don't know what's wrong with these Democrats in the series, but they cannot beat Republicans when it matters. They might pick them off here and there against, you know, not important matchups, but the Republicans are just dominating. There's a lot more competitive Republican divisions. I don't know what's going on, but it feels like the Democrats are just weaker in this series. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, as the um head chairman of the DNC, I'll say, you know, it's some sometimes you don't want to show up against someone who's not in your conference. It it happens, Andy. Um I yep. still think we have some studs. I still think Jimmy Carter is a stud. I still think Obama is a stud, and JFK has proven resilient. So yes, speaking, they have speaking about Carter Ashton. Next week, guys, you better come back on week nine because Carter has a primetime matchup trying to get back on the right track against George W. Bush, also trying to get back on the right track. It's an important matchup for standings, for playoff hopes, for Democrat versus Republican respect. It's huge, so we hope we can join us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a big matchup for Jimmy Carter because if he can win that, he can... um try to pull ahead, keep on top of the DNC South and lock it up. Because DNC South, Andy, is wide open. Technically, if Jimmy Carter loses his next two games and Bill Clinton wins one, he'll just tie up Jimmy Carter right there. So, yeah. Uh, yep. But Reagan clinches his RNC West division tonight with that win. But it's been a fun week, guys. Week 8, we're two weeks away from the playoffs. Well, we will not be back next week. I am actually going to be gone. A little vacation for me. So we'll be back the following week just to make it more simple. We will have a podcast on the our channel on Tuesday. So go check it out. We've been doing tier lists lately. We've done the state flags. Go check that one out. We've done even the U.S. presidents. Go check that one out. But thank you for joining us. Come back when we see the main matchup against W. Bush and Carter. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you guys next time.